The world around us is there for us to explore, whether that be up and out in space or looking at incidents a little closer to home. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at mysterious and interesting discoveries. Universe should not exist, say CERN scientists. If the complex inner workings of the universe seem like they were just too good to be true, you might need to think again. Recently, scientists conducting research through CERN in Switzerland have confirmed that, theoretically, the universe should not exist at all and should have annihilated itself pretty much as soon as it began. Although we have long recognized and understood how incredible it is that, out of all the Earth-like planets in the universe, ours was able to be placed under just the right conditions to develop the miracle of life, researchers studying the creation of the universe now say that the true miracle is that anything is even here at all. This incredible statement was made after careful study of the creation of our world from the context of the Big Bang Theory, which is, of course, the prevailing theory of how it all came to be in the first place. According to the theory, all the matter currently held within the universe, which is also all of the matter that has ever been in the universe, was once compacted into a small speck the size of a grain of sand that spontaneously exploded, sending all of that matter reeling out into what evolved and reacted with each other over billions of years to become the space that we think of today. This theory leaves a few pieces of the puzzle unaccounted for. For starters, there is no explanation for the Hubble constant, which is essentially the rate at which the universe continues to expand. But the CERN scientists set aside that issue in favor of a much, much larger one. If the Big Bang theory is indeed the correct one, then the particle explosion should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter, but researchers have been unable to locate antimatter in any significant quantities. Not only that, but if every particle of matter burst forth with an accompanying amount of antimatter, all of the pairs of opposite but equal particles would have attracted each other instantly, eliminating all chances for the creation of a universe in one indescribable cosmic energy explosion. Yet, clearly, that failed to happen. So, what gives? The short answer is that, as of this moment, we do not know, although it is not for lack of trying. CERN scientists working on the recently published study attempted to discover what might make antimatter particles just different enough from particles of actual matter so that they would not immediately attract and combust following the initial explosion. They were unable to find anything that could even begin to point them in the right direction. And they are not alone in the relentless search for an answer to what has become known as the matter-antimatter imbalance. Particle physicists across the world have been attempting to find the solution, but to no avail. As one of the CERN scientists, Christian Smora told Science Alert, all of our observations find a complete symmetry between matter and antimatter, which is why the universe should not actually exist. An asymmetry must exist here somewhere, but we simply do not understand where the difference is. What is the source of the symmetry break? And this question, what is the source of the symmetry break, is the one that is currently mystifying scientists as they attempt to find an answer to the cryptic question, why do we exist at all? Physicists find ultra-rare, triple glue ball particle after 48 years. It has taken physicists just under half a century to confirm the theory about the triple glue ball particle. This particle, known as Odoron, was first predicted by scientists in 1973, but was never seen in the real world. It is an ultra-rare and short-lived combination of three gluons, which are tiny particles. Scientists theorized that the odoron would occur when protons smashed together at extremely high speeds, although they could not figure out the exact conditions needed. Odorons are unique particles formed with three sticky gluons, which serve an essential role in the makeup of protons and neutrons. Gluons carry the strong force, one of the fundamental forces of the universe that glue quarks together and allows them to form protons and neutrons, then binding them together with atomic nuclei. When protons smash into each other in colliders, they break apart nearly three quarters of the time. In a quarter of the experiments, though, they bounce off each other and survive the collision. 
This could be due to the exchange of some gluons between particles during the interaction. Proton-proton and proton-antiproton collisions exchange particles and sometimes result in a glue ball, where two or three gluons emerge. Although scientists had already witnessed a double glue ball, they recently confirmed the existence of the Odoron, a triple glue ball. After spending decades examining data from two colliders, scientists have uncovered enough conclusive evidence to indicate the rare particle's existence. Researchers collected information from the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, in Geneva, a 27-kilometer circular atom slammer that discovered the Higgs boson and the now-defunct Tevatron in Illinois, USA, which is a 6.3-kilometer-long collider that slammed protons and antiprotons together. The researchers theorized that the varying rates in the two types of collisions would reveal odorons, because there would be a minute difference between the frequencies of protons bouncing off of antiprotons and other protons. They instituted a mathematical approach to compare the data from the two colliders since they occurred at differing energy levels, producing a graph they then called the money plot. This plotted graph reveals the existence of the odoron in the space between the two types of collisions, they do not line up exactly, which implies the particle exists. It also has a five-sigma statistical significance, solidifying the proof and reaching the gold standard in determining new particles. The odds of this gap occurring without influence from odorons is about 1 in 3.5 million. Despite having predicted its existence nearly 50 years ago, scientists argue that the odoron will not alter any aspect of the way we approach or understand physics. Some researchers even reject it being considered a true particle, arguing that it is only a quasi-particle since it is temporarily arranged of smaller particles. Regardless, the recent evidence is crucial to the science community because it confirms the theory about the different rates of collisions. The 1973 prediction was correct after all. Uranus was once slammed by a rogue space body. We have eight planets in our solar system, and a notable shout-out to Pluto. But aside from Earth, with us here on it, there is one planet that is particularly quirky. In the July of 2018, several studies were able to confirm that Uranus has some relatively strange behaviors, one of which being its out-of-the-ordinary rotation system, spinning at a 90-degree angle compared to the other planets in the solar system. Following this discovery, we have to ask ourselves why this happened, and there are some theories in the works. Some researchers have suggested that a large-scale impact might have left Uranus a little different than the planetary pals alongside it. A team of UK-based researchers in the December of 2018 added some more fuel to this theory, releasing a simulation of what would happen if a body twice the size of Earth hit Uranus. A description of what would happen recounted that a large amount of the material from the unknown body's core would fall into the core of Uranus. If this was a high angular momentum impact, then a large amount of the core of the body could become embedded within the ice layer, forming lumps. So, if this theory is in fact correct, that leaves the question of when did this happen? Some scientists have suggested this huge collision may have been an event that took place millions of years ago, even before Uranus's moons had formed. Of course, not everyone jumped into agreement with the simulation. A debate predictably began, with some people forming conspiracies suggesting that the Earth had a similar fate awaiting in its future, with the alleged Planet Nine being the cause. The existence of Planet Nine is purely hypothetical, though it is an alleged planet that orbits outside of Neptune. It seems that we do not have anything to be concerned about anytime soon nonetheless. Could this collision be what happened to Uranus, and is it possible that a mysterious body in the solar system could mean that Earth one day meets a similar fate? Hubble Space Telescope takes another look at a weird galaxy that seems to lack dark matter. Dark matter is one of the most mysterious things in our universe. It is invisible, but has immense gravitational effects. It is, however, supposed to be everywhere hidden in plain sight. And yet, despite how it is meant to make up most of the universe, astronomers in 2018 reported sightings of a strange galaxy which seemed to entirely lack dark matter. 
The concept shocked astronomers and many thought it impossible, but the cosmos never fails to astound. The initial finding was met with much skepticism, but after the galaxy named DF2 was checked using the Hubble Space Telescope, the hypothesis was confirmed and further investigations are being planned. Most galaxies form spirals or ellipticals such as the Milky Way or M87. DF2, however, works in never-before-seen ways, with researchers saying that it goes against everything we know about how the cosmos is supposed to work. DF2's density levels are astoundingly low, and it is an ultra-diffused galaxy. In short, it has the mass of a tiny galaxy, but it is far wider than it should be. All that matter is spread out. For example, DF2 is the size of our own Milky Way, but it has less than half its overall percentage of stars and planets. The best explanation for how vastly diffused the galaxy is would be the lack of dark matter to fill in the cracks. It is important to note that astronomers are split in opinion over this discovery. Some argue that the data still is not conclusive enough to warrant any real consideration and that the astronomy team miscalculated the distance of the galaxy which accounts for the faulty recorded brightness. Fewer stars mean that less of DF2's gravity could be accounted for by visible matter, and therefore dark matter would surely atone for the remainder of the gravity. But such claims were disproven with the second analysis of DF2. Dark matter itself is a subject of intrigue, with various theories as to what it is made of. Scientists believe that dark matter is made of axions, a particle that has not been proven to exist, but it might be, or primordial remains of black holes. Either way, our knowledge of dark matter begins and ends at the simple fact that we know it is there. Peter van Dockham, one of the researchers, stated about the discovery. For almost every galaxy we look at, we say that we can't see most of the mass because it's dark matter. What you see is only the tip of the iceberg with Hubble. But in this case, what you see is what you get. Hubble really shows the entire thing. That's it. It's not just the tip of the iceberg. It's the whole iceberg. The new information proves that DF2 is further than initially believed, making dark matter even less likely to exist in the galaxy. Now the argument of distance miscalculation, though still somewhat prominent, is very unlikely. The mystery will surely continue for years to come before we are graced with the truth. We are constantly reaching for new knowledge. It is within our very nature to comprehend, but we must deal with the potential that there are things beyond our understanding. Astronomers might have found mysterious black holes hidden throughout universe. We have known about the existence of black holes for a long time. To this day, however, much remains unknown about them as it is difficult to conduct proper research into these mysterious, all-devouring entities. Black holes are generally the size of stars, if not bigger, in the case of colossal super-black holes. The largest black holes can be the enormous size of millions of stars bundled together. And yet, scientists found that there is a missing puzzle piece. We have small black holes and colossal black holes, and yet, what of the medium-sized black holes? This mystery has been confusing astronomers for years, but we might have finally solved it. According to Vivienne Baldessere, assistant professor at Washington State University, most of the theories for their formation rely on conditions that are found only in the very early universe. We wanted to test another theory that says they can form throughout cosmic time in these really dense star clusters. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is the planet's most powerful X-ray telescope, was used to look into the matter. It was created to notice even the slightest X-ray data from outer space, and scientists used it to find signs of black holes close to nuclear star clusters across over a hundred galaxies. Balder says researchers are attempting to track nuclear star cluster formed black holes since their density makes it likely that they create them. We expect many of these black holes to be in the intermediate mass regime between supermassive black holes and stellar mass black holes where there is very little evidence for their existence. Less than a single percent of stars turn into supernovas, which often become nothing but beautiful space dust. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope revealed that in the place of supernova SN2012Z, a star still remained. University of California professor Andy Howell states, 
Nature tried to strike this star down, but it came back more powerful than we could have imagined. It's still the same star, but back in a different form. It transcended death. Curtis McCulley, the lead author of the study, added, Nobody was expecting to see a surviving star that was brighter. That was a real puzzle. SN2012Z was a strange type of supernova, more gradual than most. It is thought that perhaps it is a failed supernova that might leave behind an eventual black hole. The theory follows that this star only partially exploded and increased its brightness as a result, yet the supernova failed to turn the star into a nebula. The thought is that although medium-sized black holes are rare, they are formed similarly to these failed supernovas. But, of course, all this is merely a working theory. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel. Hit the bell to be notified when we share about another discovery. Thank you for watching.